We're looking at the side rule. I'm going to show you why the side rule is true. It's a really nice, memorable formula. But why is it that? And there's lots of different ways to prove it. Um, there's a way that you'll see in your textbook, which, which works quite nicely. However, it has three different versions because they have a version for when the angle uh, is the angles are acute, um, the angles right angled, and the angle is obtuse. And you have to construct slightly different triangles for each of them, like this. Uh, something like that. Okay, so for each of those triangles, the proof for the sign rule looks ever so slightly different. So you've got that proof, you can access it, you can read it at your own leisure. What I want to do is show you a slightly different proof that doesn't need different versions, but it does require a little bit of extra work because we've got to develop a formula first. Another one that you know, which is the area of a triangle. Now, this is another result which you should have seen before, but maybe you're like, I don't really know where it comes from. So I will show you. If you are given any triangle you like, and it's got lengths uh, A, B, and C for its sides, in order to work out the area of this triangle, or well, the original formula we have for the area of a triangle requires a base, and what else does it require? It requires this guy here, the perpendicular height, right? And by the way, it's important that it's perpendicular. Uh, it's not just any height, but we don't like saying the word perpendicular because it's so long. So that's why we, we sort of abbreviate it to half base times height. And so I'll just label this H. Okay? Now, I want to develop the area formula that you've seen before, which is more sophisticated than half base times height, which uses tree. So to do that, I need some angles on here. Being that I have labeled my sides, A, B, and C, I'm going to name my angles, capital A, capital B, capital C. But how do I do it? I do it in a particular way, not just randomly. Yeah, did it? Or is it across from A, it's like a capital A? Yeah, so if A is over here, I'm going to say um, across from there, opposite, directly opposite. I'm going to call that one capital A, and I'm going to follow that trend that makes this capital B and capital C. And that becomes quite important for me. Right, now what I want to do is I want to develop a formula for the area that doesn't rely on this perpendicular height. So I know that I could say area equals half base times height. But I want to substitute something else for that H, right? <laughs> Shane, do you want to get the door open? Thanks. Uh, so what am I going to do? In order to get rid of the H, I've got to find H in terms of, bless you, in terms of something else in the triangle, okay? Now I can do this in a variety of ways, but the ways I'm gonna focus on is have a look with me, if you've got like another color, at this right angle triangle on the left-hand side. Okay, if we focus on this triangle, being that this guy is, by the way, it's a perpendicular height, but does anyone know what it's called when you have a perpendicular height inside a triangle? It starts with the letter A. So no, that thing's called, we call that the altitude. So it's like how high something is directly above. We've got the altitude here, which forms this right angle triangle over here. So I could just use regular right angle triangle tree ratios in that triangle, right? Have a look. Do you notice this is the side I'm trying to get rid of? This side down here, I actually don't know what it's equal to. Uh, I know it's less than B, but I don't know how much less than B. So I'm gonna avoid using this side over here. I do know this side though, right? So what side is this in this right angle triangle? It's the hypotenuse, right? And the other angle that I know <coughs> is this guy down here, which makes this the opposite side. Does that make sense? So have a look, keep track of me. In this right angle triangle, I've got the hypotenuse, I've got the side opposite this angle, so which ratio will I use? Sine is opposite on hypotenuse. So let's write this together. I can say sine C is equal to H over A. Okay, now remember my goal in trying to write this down is to replace H with something. So I'm gonna make H the subject here, H equals all I have to do is multiply both sides by A, and I'm there. Okay, fantastic. I'm almost there, I'm not very far off. I'm gonna to return to my original area of a triangle formula, okay? and I can say it's half base 
And instead of writing height, I'm going to write this. Base times A sine C, like so. Does that make sense? And now the familiar area equals half A, B sine C emerges. Right? So what we've done is we've transitioned away. This thing doesn't need to know the perpendicular height. It's got the perpendicular height sort of baked into it. Okay? As long as you know any two sides and which angle do I need again? It's not just any angle. Which one? We actually have a famous uh, special name for it. If A is here and B is here, then the angle you've got is this one down here. It's between the two sides you've chosen, and that's important. We call him the, and you might want to label this, we call him the included angle. Does that phrase ring a bell? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Once I said it, you're like, oh, I remember now. Okay. So, any two sides of the included angle, off you go. Okay. Now, here's where we get to the sine rule. What I love about this formula is, I started looking at this side and this side, but I didn't have to, right? I could rearrange all of the letters or I could construct a different altitude and I would get a different combination of sides and therefore a different angle. For instance, if I do choose A and B, if instead I chose A and C, I would write not this, but half A, C, sine, okay, what's the included angle? It's B up the top there, right? And exactly the same way, I could say, well, if I didn't choose A and B or A and C, the last combination is B and C. So if I chose that, then it would be sine A. Okay, now this is important. This is the crucial step, right? If I can approach the area of a triangle in any of these three ways, and presumably it's the same triangle, so the area is the same, I can actually operate on all of these three things together. Watch. I'm going to write half AB sine C is half AC sine B is half BC sine A. I'm literally one step away from the sine rule once I've written this down. Okay? Have a look. Do you see there's some common factors here, right? There's a whole bunch of common factors. And there are some things which aren't common, but if I divide through by them anyway, I'll get something nice and neat. I'm going to divide every single term by a half ABC. Can anyone see why? Watch what happens. If I go a half ABC there, which of course means I've got to do it all the way through. What happens to all the halves? They're all gone, right? Every, these halves, these halves, these halves, they all cancel with each other, so that's good. Have a look at what else gets left behind. See how there's this AB cancels with this AB, right? This AC cancels with that AC. This BC, you get the idea. And so once you cancel everything out, you're left with sine C on little c, sine B on little b, and the last one. Okay? And this is the sine rule that you know and love. We only tend to use one part of it. Right? Because you're like, oh, well, if I'm solving for something, then I just need, for example, if I want to find this angle, I just need to know another angle, its opposite side, and this opposite side. And then you're done. So you don't need to use all three. But the point is, what's really nice about developing it this way is, you can see all three are equal to each other, because that's just looking at the triangle in three different ways. Because it's a triangle. So that's what you've got. Okay. So this is the sine rule. Uh, there's another way to write it. This is the way that you would write it if you wanted to find an angle. If you wanted to find a side, you would write it slightly differently. What would you do? You would just rearrange it. You just well, you turn everything upside down, right? So you would write C on sine C, B on sine B. If you needed a third one, you would write A on sine A. Okay. Now it's, it's the same formula. It's the same formula. It's identical. It's just that this saves us one step of turning the thing upside down, which is what you'd have to do eventually. Okay.